I bet you wish you were as lucky as this guy. Hey sir, congratulations on winning the jackpot lottery. Here's your check for $1 billion. Oh, finally, man, thank you so much. I just wanna say that I wish I saw this YouTube video with this Asian guy with glasses that talks about the nine highest paying jobs without a college degree, because if I saw that, and I wouldn't be riddled with student debt right now, um, but it's fine. I have, a, I have a degree and I'm working a minimum wage job still. Everything's fine. And this, this check, this check is gonna help out a lot, by the way with my student debt. Hey friends, Vincent here, and my goal is to make personal finance accessible through bad jokes and puns. And the reality of the matter is that the cost of college is too damn high. People are drowning in hundreds of thousand dollars in debt even before they start the first day of work. So if you don't want that to happen to you, but you still want to make a ton of money, then good news. You don't need college to make a boatload of money. Did you know that the national median salary is a little under $40,000? So I went ahead and I hand curated the top nine highest paying jobs that pays double what the national median salary is. And there's even a couple of jobs that pay well over $100,000. And all of these jobs do not require altogether now without, without, any, any, degrees. Degrees. without any degrees. <laughs> really guys, that was, that was really sad and horrible. They don't require a degree. There, that's that's what I get for trying to have a little bit of pizzazz. Now, although I went to college, a lot of my friends didn't and they're still doing great in life. And yes, some of them even have the jobs that I'm gonna be talking about and some of them even make more than me. If you're on the fence of going to college or if your immigrant parents like mine are pressuring you to go to college by saying you won't make enough money without a degree, definitely check out this video out first to see what your options are. And although these jobs don't require degrees, some of them may still require some certification or training, but still, all this in the grand scheme of things is a lot cheaper and a lot quicker than going to college. Electrical repairers have a median annual salary of $82,780 and on the high end, $110,110. Before I tell you what they do, did you ever wonder what those little sticks in the ground are called? Well, this is called a tree, but this is called a power line and these guys carry electricity all to your home. And if one of them snaps, well, then this happens. Okay guys, seriously, can we turn the lights back on? I just watched Paranormal Activity. Electronic repairers are responsible for testing, maintaining, and repairing power equipment around the city because modern infrastructure is entirely dependent on electricity. So you'll be going around and inspecting electrical equipment to make sure everything is Gucci. And if something breaks down, then who are you gonna call? Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters. No, 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 guys, come on, get with the program. Who are you gonna call? Electronic repairers. There we go. This job is a good fit for people who can read and digest work information because you could be working on different equipment every day. You also wanna be able to solve problems very quickly on the spot and have some really steady hands. And if you don't, then, well, you should probably check out the next job. To be making that sweet 82K salary, you'll need a high school diploma and potentially complete an apprenticeship or other employer training program, which could last up to three years. Power plant operators have a medium annual salary of $84,650 with a high of $129,500. $530. And if you ever watched Homer Simpsons, then you pretty much have a day in the life of a power plant operator minus the nuclear part. You'll be working in a control room just like Homer to monitor and control different systems that produces electricity. Basically, you'll be managing the source of the power before it gets to the city for the electrical repairs that we just talked about previously. This job is really good for people who are good at communicating and solving problems because if there is an issue, then you'll need to work through it with your team since the entire city or the entire state is dependent on you for power. You should also be comfortable working in high pressure and really stressful environments, which now that I think about it, is the complete opposite of homework. Maybe that's why he wasn't very good at his job. You'll typically need a high school diploma or equivalent for this job, or even be certified, hold on. Even be certified through the North American Electric Reliability Corporation's System Operator Certification Program, or NIRSCOP. Nice scop. Next up is elevator installer and repairs. And fun fact, one of the scenarios that I play over and over in my head that gives me a ton of anxiety is going into a crowded elevator with a bunch of people where you're shoulder to shoulder and you really have to use the bathroom. And then all of a sudden, the elevator stops working. <laughs> that gives me so much anxiety just thinking about it. So elevator people, please do a good job here, please. The elevator folks would be maintaining, installing, and fixing elevators and escalators, and you'll be working with different components from brakes, control system, and even repair cables. And for this, you get a wonderful median annual salary of $88,540 with a high of 
$500. This job is a good fit for people who have a good grasp of wiring and machinery, are persistent, have a high attention to detail, and are really good at problem solving. To be an elevator person, employers typically require at least a high school diploma and potentially an apprenticeship program and all the job training, and depending on your state, you might also need a license to operate. Computer programmers have a median salary of $89,190, and on the higher end, $146,050. Now, true story, in between jobs for a few months, I actually taught myself some computer programming languages like Python, HTML, and CSS, thinking that it'd be nice to be a computer programmer and have all that flexibility. But fast forward a few weeks, I finally landed my first interview and you'll never guess what had happened. I was prepping for a few days, you know, I was trying to get confident and I was feeling good. But on the day of the interview, I was super nervous, mom spaghetti, and I had a complete brain fart, a brain freeze, and literally forgot everything. And I had to leave the interview super embarrassed and I was apologizing profusely. Now you didn't ask for the story, but I wanted to share the lesson that I learned, which is to never give up because, and you won't believe this again, a few weeks passed, I got another interview, different company, and I did so well at this programming interview that I got the job and I was promoted to the chief technical officer on my second day. No, I'm just kidding. I never applied to another programming role after that again. I was scarred for life and I closed that chapter. Sometimes there's just no lessons to be learned. Computer programmers create, write, and test programming code that allows applications to be run. And in order to be a computer programmer, you'll need to learn some languages. And no, English doesn't count. It has to be a computer programming language like C, Python, or Java. To be a good programmer, you have to be really good at problem solving, being able to understand technologies and systems and logic, and having a basic understanding of math, like add, subtract, divide, multiply. Despite what you might think, you actually don't need any degrees. You can learn everything you need to know online for free, or you can go to a paid coding bootcamp, which are much cheaper and shorter than college. And I actually had several friends that went through bootcamp and they actually really, really enjoyed it. And they said the best part is at the end of the bootcamp, they actually bring in companies that are looking to hire computer programmers. So a ton of them actually graduate with the job already in hand. Next is distribution manager, and they're in charge of coordinating, planning, and directing the transportation of all goods for a company. Like if your company sells sofas, then you're responsible for getting the sofa from China to retail stores in the United States efficiently and cost effectively. So you're basically Nick Fury, where you coordinate, plan, and direct the Avengers to kill evil things and protect Earth, but just a little bit less cool in real life. Now, I always thought that this was automated, but it's actually pretty manual. And hey, I can't complain, it pays really well with the median salary of $97,340 and a high end of $169,590. You'll be a good fit for this job if you have really good problem solving skills, have high attention to detail, you handle your stress well, and you're able to cooperate with a bunch of different people. You don't need a degree for this 97k job, but you should have a high school diploma, have multiple years of working or managing a warehouse, and have a really good understanding of shipping technology today. Next up is database manager with a whopping median salary of $98,860 and on the high end, $155,660. Database managers organizes and stores data, which is immensely important nowadays when everything done is based on data. You need to make sure that the company data is available to those who need access and not accessible to those who don't need it. And at the same time, you need to be able to strategize disaster recovery plans, upgrade databases, and constantly test new software because this industry is a growing at unprecedented rates. This job is really good for people who have a really good visual understanding of things. They can see hidden patterns. They have some basic math skills and are just super dependable people. Similar to computer programming, although you don't need a degree, employers do want to see at least a high school diploma and at least some classes or courses in database development. However, the most important thing that they want to see is you having experience in database languages such as SQL or SQL. Construction managers will be planning, supervising, and coordinating entire construction projects from the flow of workers, materials, budget, to scheduling. And construction workers is a really perfect blend if you have a general interest in building and design. And this blended job has a absolute crazy median salary of $102,980 with a high of $159,470. This job is a perfect fit for people who have great communication, leadership, organization and problem solving skills because you're pretty much going to be using that every single day. But the absolute most important thing for a construction manager is to have extensive, extensive on the job experience or be heavily specialized in the trade. You could also make yourself more attractive by getting a certification in construction management. Next up is a computer security analyst reporting for duty. Security analyst, your mission is to bravely protect your company's networks from outside intruders. 
Think of yourself as gatekeepers, where you'll be monitoring and responding to data breaches and cybersecurity attacks. Thank you, sir. And for being a protector of the internet, your median salary is a whopping $130,590 and on the high end, $163,300. Although some companies prefer a degree, many don't require one and they just want some prior experience and some certification. And the last highest paying job without a degree is an air traffic controller with a median salary of $130,420 and on the high end, $184,780. Air traffic controllers direct air traffic from the ground and the air and make sure that people take off and land safely and efficiently to minimize any delays. This job is the absolutely ultimate domino effect because think about it, if anything is delayed in one airport, let's say JFK, if flight is delayed, then that will disrupt air travel throughout the entire country and even parts of the world. This job is a perfect fit for people who have really good communication and organization skills, they can pay attention to details and they're able to very quickly think on your feet. Now you don't absolutely need a degree, but it is preferred to have an associate's degree from an air traffic training initiative, but you can also be considered if you have three years of progressively responsible work experience. You'll also need to pass the air traffic controller specialist skills assessment battery as well as take the air traffic controller training course at the FAA Academy. As you can see, a college degree isn't necessary to make a high salary. In fact, these are only some of the highest paying jobs out there, which you can get out of high school and with some additional training and maybe certification. There are a ton more high paying jobs out there and depending on where you live, you may or may not have some of these opportunities. Like I know some of these jobs like the air traffic controller, you might need to relocate to a city that actually offers this role. One thing I want you to take away from this video is that there are a ton of options out there. There is no right or wrong path and I don't want you to feel like going to college is the only right path out there. Maybe some of these jobs speak to you and maybe they don't and that's okay if you're still searching. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you're constantly exposing yourself to as many things as possible so that one day you can be inspired to choose the right path for you and just the fact that you're even watching this video is a fantastic start. You don't need to follow the traditional path from high school to college to make it nowadays. You have a ton of options available now and if your immigrant parents or just parents in general are pressuring you to go to college, maybe you can show them the list, these lists of jobs where you can earn a ton more than people coming straight out of college and you won't be riddled with debt. And remember, just because these jobs don't require a degree, it doesn't mean that they're easy to get. They will require a lot of time, a lot of preparation, and even maybe money to get started because you'll need to get certification and go through training. Getting these jobs is not easy, but nothing in life that's worthwhile is normally easy. But one thing is for sure, if you do successfully get one of these jobs, then your return on investment will be huge already, especially with the median salary that's already double the national median salary. Now for me, if I didn't have this YouTube channel or if I didn't go to college, if I had to completely start over from zero, I would have chose the computer. Pro At the same time, with all this flexibility, I would be working on my own little projects that hopefully would become bigger 